this is another video. I think the last one for Pace Geometry 4, Pace 1112. And I'm looking here at page 35, 36, theorem 40, 41. Let's read it together. It says the segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side, and its length is half the length of the third side. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about what this means, okay? If we, it talks about the segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, and that means that that line segment is going to, two things are true. Number one, it's going to be parallel to the third side. And thirdly, it's going to be half the length of the third side. So we have some interesting things going on here, all right? So if I come down about halfway on this side, it's going to be right about here, and halfway on this side is right here, all right? So I'm going to take my ruler, and if I connect these two points, all right, <clears throat> first of all, these two line segments are parallel to each other. And if this is halfway, then the length, let's see what this length is down here. This one is 19 inches, so half of 19 is 9.5. So I would expect that to be about nine and a half inches. And look at that. It is nine and a half inches. Okay. So <clears throat> we can, there's all kinds of cool things now that we can do. In fact, they're going to have you do on page 36. So for instance, if we know that this line segment right here, let's just make up a number. Let's say this line segment is seven then how long would this line segment be? It has to be double that, okay? So 14. Let's say this one is 21. Just make up a number, okay? If we know that's 21, this one has to be double it. It has to be 42, okay? Let's, we could go the other way. If the long one is 30, <coughs> then what would this one coming through the middle have to be? 15? Right, okay? Now, <laughs> again, sometimes it seems like this isn't fair. I didn't think I was gonna have to do algebra in geometry, and this is one of those places where algebra and geometry intersect, and we have to do some math. It's not hard, okay? Um, so there on the top of page 36, you do a couple problems, three and four are like that, okay? Uh, number five, this there's it kind of works its way down. It tells you that angle um, A, okay, is 40 degrees. Angle B down here is 75 degrees. Now, working backwards from there, so you have a big triangle, okay, A, B, C. Think about that triangle first. And if you know that, then you can figure out what angle C is, okay? And then from there, you can just keep working your way around inside there and finding out um, what the different lengths or actually the measures of all of these angles. Okay. Now let's go to the bottom of page 36 because again, they, they kind of mix up a little bit of algebra and, uh, and the numbers. Okay. So instead of giving us the numbers outright, they uh, give us a little formula. So they might say that this short line here is x plus 5, and this is 4x minus 2. And they want us to solve for x. All right, so let's think about it. This longer one, 4x minus 2, has to be equal to twice the length of that. 2 times x plus 5, okay? which would be 2x plus 10. And then I can bring the 2x over here and bring the 2 over here, right? So add the 2 and you get 12. Subtract the 2x from 4x and we have 2x, divide by 2, and you know that x is equal to 6. Now you can take the x up here, plug it in. Now you know the length, okay? And so we're, we're, we're trying to knock some of the rust off of the algebra that we haven't used for months. 
and just do a little bit, okay, a little bit of solving some math problems. But we're using this geometry fact, and that is that this longer side is equal to twice this. And so problem six and seven, okay, are going to be very similar to that. All right, one last comment I want to make about uh, page 35. Notice we have a long proof here to do and uh, all kinds of reasons. However, <clears throat> this is drawing on things that we have learned throughout the first and second and third paces, okay, a little bit here in the fourth. And um, if you study carefully, how did they get from one step to the next? What's the reason for doing that? Um, and maybe pull out some of your um, personal handbook pages, you know, from the previous paces and look at some of those and come up with the reasons. Do your best, okay? Once you get it, then go up to the score key before you go, you know, don't do too many pages. Stop, go up to the score key, get some immediate feedback and see how you did, okay? And don't feel too bad if you got a few wrong, all right? You're, it's, this is challenging. So don't feel bad if it's hard, but don't just go up to the score key and copy it, okay? Do your best. You should be able to do a lot of these without um, any help, okay? And then the last challenging thing here is on page 36 at the bottom. They have um, number eight, okay? So do this on separate paper, a formal proof, and um, they give you some hints, okay? And uh, again, think about it. Do your best to set it up and get as far as you can. Show your work on notebook paper, and then, uh, then you can go and score that. And I will tell you that that one, let's see, is that, um, yeah, so number eight. So they, they have seven steps on that one, okay? And, of course, the first is the given and the seven is the thing you're proving. That shouldn't be too hard. And if you follow the tips that they give you, hopefully you can do well on that one. All right? Uh, the next piece is a challenging one, but the, uh, there are some challenging things in here as well. All right, good luck on the final checkup, self-test, and pace test.